The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse A country mouse invited a town mouse, an intimate friend, to pay him a visit and partake of his country fare. As they were on the bare plowlands, eating their wheat stalks and roots pulled up from the hedgerow, the town mouse said to his friend, You live here, the life of the ant, while in my house is the horn of plenty. I'm surrounded by every luxury, and if you will come with me, as I wish you would, you shall have an ample share of my dainties. The country mouse was easily persuaded and returned to town with his friend. On his arrival, the town mouse placed before him bread, barley, beans, dried figs, honey, raisins, and last of all, brought a dainty piece of cheese from a basket. The country mouse, being much delighted at the sight of such good cheer, expressed his satisfaction in warm terms and lamented his own hard fate. Just as they were beginning to eat, someone opened the door. They both ran off squeaking as fast as they could to a hole so narrow that the two could only find room in it by squeezing. They had scarcely begun their repast again when someone else entered to take something out of a cupboard, whereupon the two mice, more frightened than before, ran away and hid themselves. At last, the country mouse, almost famished, said to his friend, Although you prepared for me so dainty a feast, I must leave you now to enjoy it by yourself. It is surrounded by too many dangers to please me. I prefer my bare plow lands and roots from the hedgerow, where I can live in safety and without fear. The Fox and the Grapes One hot summer's day, a fox was strolling through an orchard till he came to a bunch of grapes just ripening on a vine, which had been trained over a lofty branch. Just the thing to quench my thirst, he said. Drawing back a few paces, he took a run and a jump and just missed the bunch. Turning round again, with a one, two, three, he jumped up, but with no great success. Again and again he tried after the tempting morsel, but at last had to give up and walked away with his nose in the air, saying, I am sure they are sour. It is easy to despise what you cannot get. The Boy Who Cried Wolf There was once a young shepherd boy who tended his sheep at the foot of a mountain near a dark forest. It was rather lonely for him all day, so he thought upon a plan by which he could get a little company and some excitement. He rushed down towards the village calling out, Wolf! Wolf! And the villagers came out to meet him and some of them stopped with him for a considerable time. This pleased the boy so much that a few days afterwards he tried the same trick, and again the villagers came to his help. But shortly after this, a wolf actually did come out from the forest and began to worry the sheep, and the boy of course cried out, Wolf! Wolf! still louder than before. But this time, the villagers, who had been fooled twice before, thought the boy was again deceiving them, and nobody stirred to come to his help. So the wolf made a good meal off the boy's flock, and when the boy complained, the wise men of the village said, A liar will not be believed, even when he speaks the truth. The Boys and the Frogs some boys playing near a pond saw a number of frogs in the water and began to pelt them with stones. They killed several of them. When one of the frogs, lifting his head out of the water, cried out, Pray stop, my boys. What is sport to you is death to us. One man's pleasure may be another's pain. The Ass and His Master An ass belonging to an herb seller, who gave him too little food and too much work. One day, the ass made a petition to Jupiter to be released from his present service and provided with another master. Jupiter, 
after warning him that he would repent his request, caused him to be sold to a tile maker. Shortly afterwards, finding that he had heavier loads to carry and harder work in the brick field, he petitioned for another change of master. Jupiter, telling him that it would be the last time that he would grant his request, ordained that he be sold to a tanner. As the ass found that he had fallen into worse hands and noting his master's occupation said, groaning, it would have been better for me to have been either starved by one or to have been overworked by the other of my former masters than to have been bought by my present owner, who will even after I am dead tan my hide and make me useful to him. He that finds discontent in one place is not likely to find happiness in another. The Ass in the Lion's Skin An ass once found a lion's skin, which the hunters had left out in the sun to dry. He put it on and went towards his native village. All fled at his approach, both men and animals, and he was a proud ass that day. In his delight, he lifted up his voice and brayed. But then, everyone knew him, and his owner came up and gave him a sound cudgeling for the fright he had caused. And shortly afterwards, a fox came up to him and said, Ah, I knew you by your voice. Fine clothes may disguise, but silly words will disclose a fool. The Lion and the Mouse Once when a lion was asleep, a little mouse began running up and down upon him. This soon wakened the lion, who placed his huge paw upon him and opened his big jaws to swallow him. Pardon, O oh king, cried the little mouse. Forgive me this time. I shall never forget it. Who knows but what I may be able to do you a turn some of these days. The lion was so tickled at the idea of the mouse being able to help him that he lifted up his paw and let him go. Sometime after, the lion was caught in a trap and the hunters who desired to carry him alive to the king tied him to a tree while they went in search of a wagon to carry him on. Just then, the little mouse happened to pass by and seeing the sad plight in which the lion was, went up to him and soon gnawed away the ropes that bound the king of the beasts. Was I not right? said the little mouse. Little friends may prove great friends. The Goose with the Golden Eggs One day, a countryman going to the nest of his goose found there an egg all yellow and glittering. When he took it up, it was heavy as lead and he was going to throw it away because he thought a trick had been played upon him. But he took it home on second thoughts, and soon found, to his delight, that it was an egg of pure gold. Every morning the same thing occurred, and he soon became rich by selling his eggs. As he grew rich, he grew greedy, and thinking to get at once all the gold the goose could give, he killed it and opened it only to find nothing. Greed often overreaches itself. The Crow and the Pitcher A crow, half dead with thirst, came upon a pitcher which had once been full of water. But when the crow put its beak into the mouth of the pitcher, he found that only very little water was left in it, and that he could not reach far enough down to get at it. He tried, and he tried, but at last had to give up in despair. <sighs> then a thought came to him, and he took a pebble and dropped it into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped it into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. At last, at last, he saw the water mount up near him, and after casting in a few more pebbles, 
he was able to quench his thirst and save his life. Little by little does the trick. The Dog and His Reflection A dog, to whom the butcher had thrown a bone, was hurrying home with his prize as fast as he could go. As he crossed a narrow footbridge, he happened to look down and saw himself reflected in the quiet water as if in a mirror. But the greedy dog thought he saw a real dog carrying a bone much bigger than his own. If he had stopped to think, he would have known better. But instead of thinking, he dropped his bone and sprang at the dog in the river. Only to find himself swimming for dear life to reach the shore. At last, he managed to scramble out. And as he stood sadly thinking about the good bone he had lost, he realized what a stupid dog he had been. It is very foolish to be greedy. The Ant and the Dove An ant went to the bank of a river to quench its thirst, and being carried away by the rush of the stream, was on the point of drowning. A dove sitting on a tree overhanging the water plucked a leaf and let it fall into the stream close to her. The ant climbed onto it and floated in safety to the bank. Shortly afterwards, a bird catcher came and stood under the tree and laid his lime twigs for the dove, which sat in the branches. The ant, perceiving his design, stung him in the foot. In oh, pain, no. the bird catcher threw down the twigs, and the noise made the dove take wing. One good turn deserves another. The Two Fellows and the Bear Two fellows were traveling together through a wood when a bear rushed out upon them. One of the travelers Hello? happened to be in front, and he seized hold of the branch of a tree and hid himself amongst the leaves. The other, seeing no help for it, threw himself flat down upon the ground with his face in the dust. The bear, coming up to him, put his muzzle close to his ear and sniffed and sniffed. But at last, with a growl, he shook his head and slouched off, for bears will not touch dead meat. Then the fellow in the tree came down to his comrade and laughed and said, What was it that Master Brune whispered to you? He told me, said the other, Never trust a friend who deserts you in a pinch. <laughs>